then I guess you're gonna have to find me because I have a medical I don't exemption. Find you. I don't so find you. and you're discriminating against me. I'm not discriminating me? right now. I'm asking. I'm, I'm not getting off the train. Okay. If that's the case, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to arrest you. You're going to have to arrest me because I don't have a mask? Are you yeah. kidding me? Yes. I am medically exempt. I showed you my medical exemption that card. This is harassment. Order. Okay. No, you need to you need to step back. All right. So, if that's the case, I'm going to be placing you under arrest. No, you're not placing me under arrest. Yes, I am. No, you're not. All right, miss. She's going to get you. Okay. Do not touch me. I'm you do under, not touch. You do not. You're a male you officer. Say? You do not I'm put your hands on me. Miss? Do you understand? Miss? Miss? You're a male officer. All right. You're a yes. male officer! Get your hands off me! He told me that it was illegal for me to be on there without a mask, and I repeatedly told him, I said, I'm so sorry, like, I'm exempt from wearing a mask, which I am medically exempt from wearing a mask. And then he decided to grab me and throw me against the wall and pin me against the wall. He ended up cracking my rib. I have bruises all over my body from him. He then dragged me off the SkyTrain when it came to a stop and he handcuffed me to a railing for 20 minutes with a cracked rib. What has happened to our great country? That was a mom trying to take a BC TransLink SkyTrain to get home to her daughter. But instead, she ended up being arrested, charged with assaulting a police officer and fined for breaking a COVID-19 restriction. That mother, Valerie Ann Foley, is now one of our newest fight the fine cases here at Rebel News. We're not only helping her by providing free legal counsel to fight the fine she received, we have also assigned a top-notch criminal defense lawyer to look into her charge as well. You can help be a part of helping us fight the good fight on behalf of Valerie, as well as others just like her at fightthefines.com. Now, you're going to hear directly from Foley about what she says took place that day on the SkyTrain in just a minute. But for a moment, I want to make sure it's known that this new normal that the government has mandated upon you and I is opening up the floodgates for people to feel entitled to discriminate against people who are medically exempt from wearing a mask, even when the many ways that some people are walking around wearing masks can leave them less protected from the virus than it would if they weren't wearing a mask at all. Now, at rebelnews.com, we've covered many claims of people who clearly state they are exempt from wearing a mask, but face discrimination anyhow. This issue is starting to become so prevalent that even Global News is shedding light on it. Last week, Global News reported on two different chapters indigo stores in the Lower Mainland that stooped to a new low for 2020, and that says a lot. One refused a family with a 12-year-old autistic boy who is unable to wear a mask. It probably would take three adults to restrain him and have that mask successfully put on him, and then he would eventually just rip it off. Then, in another location, retired Canadian Paralympic swimmer Elizabeth Walker-Young was also rejected for not being able to wear a mask and was told the police would be called on her if she refused to leave even though she has no hands to put a mask on with. My elbows don't bend, so if you just see how I'm doing this, and so putting on a mask is, is impossible. I'll say it again. What has happened to our great country? Unfortunately, Global News didn't do as good of a job explaining what took place for Miss Foley on the SkyTrain. Instead, they did a 20-second blurb that would likely guide most people to believe that the transit police officer was the victim in the situation. Check on BC Transit turned violent. Transit police say a woman refused to wear her mask or leave the train at Vancouver City Centre Station on Saturday. She got upset after being told her TransLink exemption card was no longer valid under the provincial health order. When she was told she was under arrest for causing a disturbance, she kicked an officer in the groin. She now faces criminal charges and a hefty fine. Now, as you saw in the footage that we shared from Miss Foley's phone that she now has back, 
in her possession after it was confiscated for evidence, there was definitely some resistance and foul language during Miss Foley's arrest. And during the arrest, we can hear the officer claim that Miss Foley assaulted him. Get your hands off me! Miss, please! Get your f***ing hands off me! Arrest for assault, police officer! Assault? Are you kidding me? Please? I need you because... Get off me! I will ask her about that. But is this really as cut and dry as Global News made it sound? My questions are, why was the officer arresting her to begin with? Was it lawful for him to be doing so? And is it typical for TransLink officers to approach customers like this without wearing a badge to help them be easily identifiable? Miss Foley made it crystal clear she had a mask exemption and showed him a BC TransLink exemption card, which I've now learned is no longer being issued. Yet the officer press Foley further and asks her to show him more proof that she is medically exempt. I yeah. cannot wear a mask. Yeah, okay, yeah, I cannot wear a mask. Right and I'm just like heading home to Richmond where my car okay. is. I'm just, unfortunately, I have to ask you out leave. If not, well, I'm not leaving. I'm sorry. I am not leaving. Well, I'm confused, officer. Isn't that in direct opposition of the BC Human Rights Code? According to the BC Human Rights Clinic, a person is not required to share private details about their disability. Medical information is highly sensitive and personal. While a person may have to identify that they have a disability in order to be appropriately accommodated, they should not be pressed for details about their condition. What's even more bizarre is this transit officer seems to have access to a secret provincial health order that only he can call on or to do or say whatever it is he feels like saying. The officer claimed that Foley's medical exemption was no longer valid because of the provincial order. Because I have a medical exemption card. It's not valid anymore. Says who? By the provincial order. Well, maybe the officer needs a new pair of glasses because he missed the entire section in the actual use of face coverings in indoor public spaces COVID-19 order, which is section four, where it clearly states that there are people who are medically exempt from the use of a face covering, which includes a person who is unable to wear a face covering because of a psychological, behavioral, or health condition, or a physical, cognitive, or mental impairment. Even BC TransLink, which this officer was working for, acknowledges on their website that the ministerial order includes a thing called mask exemptions. So exactly whose order and what law was this officer following when demanding Miss Foley leave that train without offering any kind of accommodation for her to get home and then placing her under arrest when she refused to leave the train. To try and get some answers to those questions and to hear the other side of the story, I reached out to Transit Police Staff Sergeant Doug Fisher for clarification. Fisher has since declined to answer my questions for clarification and added the claim that Ms. Foley and an advocate who has been helping Ms. Foley have made many public comments and accusations of police misconduct, so this file was referred to the Office of the Police Complaints Commissioner. Now, I've reached out to that office as well, and if I hear back a response in a timely manner, make sure you go to rebelnews.com. That's where you'll find that update. But for now, I'm going to let you hear from Miss Foley herself about what took place. And just so you know, she has privately disclosed her reasons for why she can't wear a mask with us and our lawyers. Here she is. I should be able to get home safe and sound without being harassed and judged. I'm not harassing you. Well, then I guess you're going to have to find me because I have a medical I don't exemption. Find you. I don't so, you and this. you're discriminating I'm against not discriminating. me. I'm not causing any harm. I walked on and you chased up to me no, I asked and told to me that I have to wear a mask yeah. when I don't have to wear yeah. one. You don't, you I cannot wear a mask. Yeah, okay? Yeah, I yeah, cannot wear a mask. Right and I'm just like heading home to Richmond where my car okay. is. Just unfortunately, I have to ask you out leave. If not, well, I'm not leaving. I'm going. sorry. I am not leaving. I have no other well, way of getting home. My car is in Richmond. So 
So I was on the Sky Train, Vancouver Sky Train, and a police officer came on the train and immediately started harassing me about wearing a mask. I willingly gave him my exemption card that, you know, I was given for my safety. And he told me that it was illegal for me to be on there without a mask. And I repeatedly told him, I said, I'm so sorry, like I'm exempt from wearing a mask, which I am medically exempt from wearing a mask. And then he decided to grab me and throw me against the wall and pin me against the wall. He ended up cracking my rib. I have bruises all over my body from him. He then dragged me off the sky train when it came to a stop and he handcuffed me to a railing for 20 minutes with a cracked rib and then i was escorted by two other police officers because i couldn't walk he had hurt me and beat on me so bad that they had to help escort me to an elevator where they ended up putting me in the back seat of a police car handcuffed all for not having a mask when I'm medically exempt from even wearing them. And then I was transported from that vehicle to a second vehicle where a female officer physically searched me, uh, went through all my, my purse, my personal belongings. I sat in their car for 20 minutes, handcuffed still. And then they took me to some some garage in Vancouver. I don't know Vancouver very well, so I can't say where it was, but I do know it was in Vancouver where I had to sit there for 30 minutes and I had them say, we need to seize your phone because it had the entire assault, armed assault um, on my phone. I was recording the entire time, even as he was beating me and pushing me against the wall, I wouldn't let go of my phone and I wouldn't stop recording. Um, and so after the garage, they then took me and dropped me off to my car in Richmond and I was coerced into signing something. Um, I am dyslexic, so it is very difficult for me to read. I can't, I couldn't read or understand what I was signing. Um, and they said that they had to take my phone and seize my phone. Wow. Um, I'm so sorry that this happened. And so you're right. The officer was saying that uh, medical exemption is no excuse for not wearing a mask yeah. on the train. Um, and yes, for proof. He, he, was, he was asking me, oh, do I have proof? And I, I handed him my medical exemption card. I explained to him multiple times, listen, I'm medically exempt. And for him to even ask me for proof is illegal in itself. And what type of medical exemption card did you present? I presented him with the TransLink card, the medical exemption card that has no expiry date whatsoever. Written on it. And, Written on it, um, yeah. And I think you had mentioned that he was saying that it was expired or... Yeah. Did he told me that it was expired and I said, well, I'm sorry, what do you want me to do? I am medically exempt and there is no expiry date on a medical exemption. Mm -hmm. That's not how it works. Now, Global News kind of talked about this really briefly. Yeah. And uh, there is certainly not <laughs> your side of the story no. given there. And they basically said a woman kicked a police officer in a groin. So can you explain what happened uh, in your own words there? That's not at all what happened. I was scared for my life. He is an armed police officer with a gun. He put his hands on me, threw me against the wall. So I was scared and I was just trying to defend myself. I wasn't trying to intentionally kick him. Like I was just trying to get him off to defend myself. What other woman wouldn't do that? I mean, I'm five foot four, I'm short. He's six foot tall armed police officer harassing me and then put his hands on me and attacked me. So what was I supposed to do? So uh, you're saying that you didn't do it first. No. It was kind of a response. It seems like the overall energy of people is really down. It's yeah. been very hard living through the restrictions and the known sense of oh. normalcy. Um, but people do need to understand that there's medical exemptions. There are. They're not always vis visible. I mean, we've done a report on a lady in her 70s who had 
oxygen tubes coming from her nose and she was still humiliated and kicked out of McDonald's. I mean, it's nonsense. So um, we're going to be sticking with you on this. Uh, we've got top-notch lawyers at Rebel News and they've heard your story and so we're teaming up with you. We're going to take care of the paperwork. We're going to take care of the legal fees through our fightthefines.com. So uh, we want you to feel peace on that. We're going to get to the bottom of everything that happens. Thank you guys so much. Right. And so can you tell us a little bit about what you've been served with so far? So I got an assault charge on from the officer saying that I assaulted him when that's not true. I was literally terrified for my life trying to just defend myself. Um, And then I got a breaking COVID ticket even though I'm medically exempt from wearing a mask. That's ridiculous. And you have bruises. You showed me some of your bruises. I have bruises all over my arms. I have a cracked rib. And this is days later. Yeah. And and you did you get some medical I was, attention? I had to go to the hospital because uh, I, I was in so much pain and I knew something was wrong. So I went for x-rays and sure enough, I've got a cracked rib, um, severe strains on my right shoulder from being slammed against the wall, like bruises on, on my wrist from being handcuffed. Well, I'm so sorry, and yeah. um, I wish this didn't happen. I hope some good comes from this report, yeah. that people can be aware that you can't uh, judge a book by its cover, and it's never okay to bully. And certainly, the police that are supposed to protect and serve us, um, we're very friendly to police with yeah. Rebel News. We respect the blue, uh, but there is a such thing as a mask exemption there. So, like I said, we're going to get to the bottom of this now. We ask our supporters to come alongside Valerie Ann with us as well. And we've already hired a team of lawyers for instances just like this because so many times it's happening across Canada. You can be a part of contributing to help us recover the cost to that by heading to fightthefines.com and donating whatever you see fit there. So uh, we're going to be working closely together. (laughs) So you're going to get sick of me. Yeah. (laughs) All right. I love people. (laughs) Well, thanks so much for being so brave to tell your story. Thank you. Now, if you want to help us fight the good fight by providing free legal counsel to help Valerie Ann fight her fines and take a deep look into the lawfulness or unlawfulness of the charges against her, please go to fightthefines.com. That's where you can donate to help her and the hundreds of cases we've already taken on to help Canadians just like her. We appreciate your support.